do you have enough strength and elastic recoil in your calf complex to run? The ankle and foot are fundamental to the runner's anatomy. Consisting of 28 bones and 55 joints, the ankle and the foot can experience up to 275% of your body weight with every step we take when we run. It is therefore fundamental for us to make sure that we have enough strength, stability, mobility in our ankle and foot when we run. Today we are going to be talking about the calf complex. The calf complex is consistent of two muscles, the gastrocnemius, which originates from the two femoral condyles, goes down and inserts into the Achilles tendon, which inserts on the back of the calcaneus or the heel bone in your foot. The other muscle is called the soleus, which originates from your tibia and fibula and go down and insert into the Achilles tendon as well, which attaches to, again, the heel bone or the calcaneus in the back part of your foot. These two muscles function in what we call plantar flexion of the foot, or our ability to be able to push down like a gas pedal. When we run, we also use it to help control speed or controlling the dorsiflexion of our foot when we are running. We are going to be testing two main properties of the muscles. The first is the strength of the muscle, and the second is the elastic recoil of the muscle. The elastic recoil, simply defined, is our ability to be able to absorb force and then produce it back quickly with rhythm coordination and timing. In order for us to test strength, we are going to be using the single leg heel race test. Now, since the muscles both have different origination points, one above the knee joint and one below the knee joint, we can use that to our advantage when we are testing each of these muscles. We can emphasize different parts of the muscle depending on what our knee is doing. So we're gonna be doing two tests, one with our knee straight and one with our knee bent. The first test is with the knee straight. What you're gonna do is you're gonna face the wall. You're gonna use the wall for balance. You're gonna put your foot directly underneath your hips. And what you're gonna do is set a metronome for 60 beats per minute to where it will click every second. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna go up to the top as high as you can go, and then come back down to the bottom. And you're going to try to keep pace with the metronome, one beat for every time we go up and one beat for every time we come down. Your goal is to do as many of these as you possibly can without losing height of how high you are going. You will then compare this to the other side. You are gonna be doing the exact same test just doing it on the other leg. Facing the wall, place the foot directly underneath your hips. You're gonna be going up as high as you can go to the beat of the metronome and then coming back down to the ground and then compare results. Ideally, we are wanting to be as symmetrical as possible. We wanna be able to have equal amounts on both sides. Now, if we're off by just a little bit, normally that's okay. Normally one person has one leg that's just slightly stronger than the other. But if we start seeing large drastic differences, like anything more than about four or five repetitions, then we can clearly start picturing some asymmetries that are forming. And it'll be important for us to go in there and fix them. How many heel raises we should accomplish was looked at by the systematic review in 2009 by Herbert and Loiser et al. And they discovered that the evidence was very variable, meaning there were a lot of different numbers that people were putting out. They should do 24, they should be able to do 27. Um, so they basically came up with an average, and the average was 27 for males, 19 for females. But most people will be looking somewhere around 25 for you to be able to do to be a healthy runner. The second heel race test is simply repeating the same test, only this time we are going to be having our knee bent about 45 to 60 degrees. So what you'll do is you'll face the wall again, place the foot directly underneath your hip. You're going to bend your knee about 45 to 60 degrees and then performing as many heel raises as you can to the beat of a metronome until you cannot perform anymore or you are losing the height of your heel raise. Again, we want to compare the right side versus the left side and be looking for any asymmetries. If we have any apparent asymmetries, it'll be important for us to go and correct them. Or if we are unable to complete a certain amount, say 25, then we should probably be working on our ability to produce strength through either the soleus or the gastrocnemius.
The second test we're going to be looking at is the POGO test. The POGO test is checking our elastic recoil of the calf complex. In order for us to perform this test, we're going to be checking both legs POGO test and a single leg POGO test. To do the bilateral pogo test, we are going to be placing both feet underneath our hips. We are going to be setting a metronome to 150 beats per minute, and you are going to be bouncing up and down to the beat of the metronome. Your goal is to spend the least amount of time on the ground as you possibly can. Then what we are going to do is we are going to test the elastic recoil of your calf complex by gradually reducing the metronome to a point where it is hard to keep up with the beat of the metronome. We are looking to see how overall strong that component of your calf complex is. Then we are going to be performing the same test with single legs. You're going to be doing your right leg, same idea, starting at 150 beats per minute. Then you will be gradually lowering down the metronome, stepwise by stepwise fashion, looking to see how low you're able to go in order to check the elastic recoil properties of that muscle. Compare the right side versus the left side. Are there any differences? Again, they should be fairly symmetrical. If we see drastic differences, one side versus the other, then it is important for us to be able to go in and correct those differences. It is important to note before we continue on to any corrective exercises that if we have a limitation in dorsiflexion of the ankle, whether it be muscular related or joint related, it can severely limit our ability to be able to produce power through the calf complex. Go check out this previous video looking at your ankle mobility as a runner and make sure that you have enough dorsiflexion in order for us to have adequate amounts of range of motion in our ankle so that we can produce the power that we are looking for. The next part of the video we're going to be looking at corrective exercises in order to improve our ability to either produce strength through the calf complex or elastic recoil through the calf complex. Most of the time, if we're having elastic recoil problems, we're probably also having some sort of strength problem with the calf complex. This isn't always the case, but a lot of times you'll see those two kind of mirror together. So if you're having an elastic recoil problem that is also not exhibited through a strength problem, then your elastic recoil problem may be due to elastic recoil properties of the calf, but also may be due to some stabilizing structures up the chain. Go check out our video on rotational pelvic stability to make sure that you don't have any issues with rotational pelvic stability concerns, because that can come into play if we're looking at pogo jumping. If my hip isn't able to stabilize, that can limit our ability to be able to absorb force and produce it back. Let's look at some progressions of calf complex strengthening exercises. A very simple one that we can start with is the traditional heel raise. You place your feet underneath your hips and what you do is you very slowly go up onto your toes and then very slowly return back down to the ground. Ideally taking about three seconds to come up onto your toes and then coming back down. If you can perform this exercise between 12 to 15 repetitions for about three sets, then we need to progress and make this exercise a little bit harder. One, of, There are a couple ways that we can make this exercise a little harder. A fun way that I like to use with runners is by placing a foot on a step and having one foot down. The foot that is down off the step is the foot that is going to be working, and the foot that is up on the step is just giving you a sense of stability and balance. So with the foot on the ground, what you're going to do is you're going to do, again, a heel raise. Raise your heel up towards the ceiling and then come back down. If you are able to complete three sets of 12 to 15 repetitions, then you need to be progressing the exercise. To progress the exercise, all you have to do is put more weight on your back foot and less weight on the front foot. If you are able to do three sets of 12 to 15, then we need to progress the exercise once again. A good way to do this is by adding in a deficit heel raise. So having one foot up on a box, one foot down on the bottom part, and you can use stairs for this, this works really well with stairs, is by doing a deficit heel single leg heel raise in this position. As we get stronger, you can always take your foot up off the stair and you can be doing a single leg heel raise that is on a deficit. Once you're able to do that for three sets for 12 to 15 repetitions, then we start loading the system. All we do is we go and grab some weights, we hold a weight down by our side, and we gradually progressively overload. And if you are able to hit somewhere between 12 to 15 repetitions for three sets, simply go up a little bit in your weight. 
The next set of exercises that we're going to be looking at are to look at improving the elastic recoil properties of our calf complex. A fun way to do this is simply by jumping rope. Now, when we jump rope, it's fun to do it to, again, to a beat of a metronome. Set a metronome for about 150 or some, some beat that is challenging for you to do and work at that for anywhere from 20 to 30 seconds. While we do want to work on just bouncing up and down in this manner, we also want to be trying to make sure we are improving our ability to change directions as well. So we also want to include some different variables such as moving forwards and backwards when we're jumping, moving side to side when we are jumping, or even including a square drill where we're going side to side, forward to back, and some diagonals as well. All keeping to the beat of a metronome for about 20 or 30 seconds. To progress this exercise, simply reduce the amount of beats per minute that you are performing the drill at and gradually improve your ability to absorb and recoil and bounce back up as quickly as you can. Once you're able to form double leg drills adequately, then we are going to be moving to single leg. You can do the exact same drills with single leg. Do a single leg jump rope stationary. We can also incorporate moving forwards and backwards, side to side, and diagonals as shown by this drill. As the same way we, we progress with the double limb jump ropes, we can also progress with the single leg by gradually reducing the metronome and improving our ability to be able to produce power through this complex. Again, our goal with these exercises is to correct any asymmetries we have. If we have one that's stronger than the other, over time we should be able to start seeing those two come and get closer together. We are also looking to improve any gross weakness that we have and improving our overall elastic recoil properties and our strength. If you guys enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up and comment down in the comment section below. If you guys are interested in our coaching services or in our running specific evaluations, check those out in the description below. I hope you guys have a great day.